Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Peace in the whole world for the stability of the holy churches of God and for union and of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For these holy hours and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our Archbishop and Father, Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, for all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us in this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Ευλογή ψυχή μου τον Γύριον και μη επιλανθάνου πάσας τας ανταποδόσεις αυτούν. Send the Ranoi Timas at the throne on Aftu, Kay Vasilia Aftu, Pandon Vespozin. Evlogite ton Girion Panda Tairgaftu, and Banditopo. Is the spot of the Etiquette and Irini to you, they told men. She did the Elaine Sons and the Afilaxonimas, or the Ostis Εαυτούς και αλληλούς και πάσαν την ζωή νημών, Χριστό το Θεό παραθώ μετά. Ότι σαν το κράτος 
και σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο νυν και αη και ει του αιώνα στον αιώνα. Εν η ψυχή μου των κυρίων, εν έσω κυρίων, εν τη ζωή μου, ψαλό το Θεό μου, έως υπάρχουν. Μακαρίος ο Θεός Ιακώ βοηθός αυτού, η ελφής αυτού, επί Κύριον των Θεών αυτούν. Σώσον δημοσίε Θεού, πόδα σώσ' εκ νεκρών, σαλούντας η Αλληλουία. Τον ποιήσαντα των ουρανών και την γη, την θάλασσαν και πάντα τα εν αυτής. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Oh, it 
eternal with the Father and the Spirit, born of the Virgin for our salvation. Let us, the faithful, give praise and worship. Of his own will he mounted the cross in the flesh. He suffered death and raised the dead by his glorious resurrection. <laughs> La voz agarró en esta bronca luz de Cristo, Cristo, que prato saedidas que es y pero ran me sarcos para el que te gar epimeliste de psiquis pragmatos a sanatu de oye Metangelo sinagalete, o sia Maria, o pneuma sud. Together, please, with our choir on page three of your bulletin, the hymn of our church, and also the condacion of the Theotokos. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, you dwell among your saints, you are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim worship by all the heavenly powers you have brought all things out of nothing into being you've created man and woman in your image and likeness adorn them with all the gifts of your grace you give wisdom and understanding to the supplicant and God our love will the sinner but have established repentance as a way of salvation you have enabled us your lowly and unworthy servants to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar to offer you to worship and praise the master accept the thrice of holy him also from the lips of the sinners and visit us in your goodness Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, 
and grant that we worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives by the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy, mortal, have mercy on us. Let us be attentive. Make your vows to the Lord our God and perform them. God is known in Judah. His name is great in Israel. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, taking not the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, and with the ashes of a heifer sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, Behold, we are going off to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. 
and they will mock him and spit upon him and scourge him and kill him, and after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant of James and John. And Jesus called to them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Church school students, please come forward. This is the day that the Lord has made. Good. You know, we are getting ready for Easter, right? And one of the ways in which we are getting ready for Easter is on Saturday to come to church. Most of the times you come here on Sundays, right? But this coming Saturday, we are going to come to church because it's a very special day. It's the Saturday of Lazarus. And so, when you come to church, of course, you are going to participate in the divine liturgy. You are going to receive communion. This is the greatest thing that you receive every uh, day, right? Now, does anybody remember what else are you going to do on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, for Saturday of Lazarus? Do you remember from past years? Hmm? What else do you do? Okay, let me ask you this. During Holy Week, and then at Easter, do you ever hold a candle in your hand? Yeah? And it has a cup in it, so that the wax does not get everywhere. Do you remember? So when you hold a candle, hold it straight, not like that, right? Don't do this, either. So you hold it straight, and it has a cup. And do you remember the color of that cup? There's actually two colors. One is red, and the other one is... White, the white one we're going to use for Easter, the red one during Holy Week. And so, who do you think puts all those cups on the candles? People, more, more specifically, older people or children? Children. So on Saturday, we need your help because we want you... Come here. Yeah, we want you to put those cups... How about on Palm Sunday? Do you remember what you receive together with the bread? What does the priest give you? Palms, the crosses, right? And who makes the palm crosses? You make them. So we need your help on Saturday to come, receive communion, make red candles, white candles, palm crosses. But there's one more very important thing that you can do on Saturday. Do you remember what that is? Hmm? Yes, receive communion is the first one. It's, sometimes it happens in that room over there. Do you see the one back there? 
And other times it happens right here in front of the altar, Rebecca. Confession. So on Saturday, you can come to confession. Now, if you're very, very, very young, like if you're not eight years old, let's say if you're four or five or six, you don't necessarily have to come to confession, although if you really want to, you're more than welcome. But usually people start going to confession when they're about eight years old or a little bit older. A little bit. But if you want to come before that, you're more than welcome. So let me tell you what happens in confession. Raise your hand, first of all, if you ever had confession. Look at this. Most of you, right? You did come to confession. And do you remember first there is a prayer, right, that all of us are saying? And then there is another prayer that you say when you come. And you say, I have sinned, O Lord, forgive me. And then what happens? What do you do after that? Because then it's your turn to speak. What? You confess your sins, right? So to put it differently, you say, what are you sorry about? Right? You confess your sins, or you're saying what you're sorry about. Um, I usually tell the children who come to me, that they should start with the thing that they are most. So before you come to confession, think about it. What is the thing that you have done that you are most ashamed of? That you are most sorry about? Now, if you confessed it before, of course, this is gone, right? You, are, you have been forgiven. But since your last confession, or maybe things you didn't say before, is there something that really bothers you that stays right here in your heart? and says, hmm, this is a heavy thing. I shouldn't have done that. And you should start with that one. And how does it feel after you speak about it? Better or worse? Better. Better because you got it off your chest. And because maybe you are receiving some advice how not to do that again. And then at the end, you are also going to be forgiven. Do you pray the prayer Our Father? And do you say in the prayer, let's say the prayer Our Father together. I'm going to stop you at a certain point, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Stop. When you say forgive us our trespasses, did God ever come to you and said, Daniel, you are forgiven. Did that ever happen? Did you ever hear a voice like that? Nicholas, you are forgiven. Did that ever happen? Never. So we are praying for God's forgiveness and we hope that God forgives us. But we don't know for sure until we come to confession. Maybe God forgave us already. If we prayed sincerely, God did forgive us already. But we don't know about it. We don't hear about it until we come to confession. And when we come to confession, guess what the priest will say? You are forgiven. Do you think that feels good or bad? Good. Because you understood that you have done something wrong. You got it off your chest. You received advice how not to do it again. And you were forgiven. Is that a beautiful thing? What do you think? Yeah. So this is why we want all of you children to come and receive confession on Saturday. The adults are going to come too after you are done with confession. So if you're about eight years old or older, come to confession. Now, why are some of the reasons that some people don't go to confession? Hmm? Why would somebody not go to confession? Yeah. They're too ashamed of themselves, right? And you know, I know you. You know me. But I will tell you, as a priest, never ever in 21 years of priesthood have I looked at somebody after confession with less love. I've always looked at them with more love. Because when somebody comes and opens up their hearts and they want to be forgiven and they want to be better, that is a good Christian right there. 
Look around yourselves in the church. Do you think anybody here is holy? Don't look at your mother. But other than that, look at everybody. Is anybody here holy? Nobody. Did everybody here sin? Yes. So what's the solution? Carry that sin with you? Or confess it and have it forgiven. Right? So we come and we confess. That's why some people don't come to confession. You're right, Debbie. Because they're ashamed. But they shouldn't be. Because the priest is the father and the loving father. And when somebody comes to confession, we, we love you even more. Right? After you were done. Good. Uh, other reasons why people don't come to confession. What? You want to say something? No? You know why some people don't come to confession? They think they have nothing to confess. They have not sinned. That's what some people think. You have nothing to confess. If you ever think that you have nothing to confess, ask your siblings. <laughs> They'll tell you. All right? Everybody has something to confess. And if you think you don't have anything to confess, arrogance, pride, because only that would make us think that we have nothing to uh, confess, right? Or maybe if we justify ourselves too much, I do bad things to others, but I'm right. No, you're not right to do bad things to others. You're right when you do good things to others. So you see why you need confession. Everybody needs confession. So, what are we going to do on Saturday? Receive communion. Cup the red cups. The white, uh, uh, red candles. White candles. Make little crosses and come to confession. God bless you. Please rise. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near and minister to the King of glory. To serve you is great and awesome even for the heavenly powers, but because of your inexplicable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all and trusted us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord, our God, rule over all things in heaven and earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, the King of Israel. You are alone, O holy, and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best with the grace of priesthood, I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. Till I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from among your children, but make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer you these gifts. For you, Christ, our God, are the offerer and the offer, the one who receives and is recipient, and to you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
Come, let us worship God our King and bow down before Him. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. For the Lord, which is to wash me thoroughly, my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I call it my transgressions and my sins are before you against you, and life is the only have I sinned and done that which is leaving your sight. Be my man justified when you speak and blameless in your judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin, my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth and you shall purge me with this, and I shall be clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear sounds of joy and gladness. That the bones of true book may rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out on my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, the full of the governing spirit. O Lord, you shall open my lips for mouth shall not shall praise the good sacrifice of the good the sacrifice of God is good. Good, you can find the May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. In peace, lift up your hands to the holy places and bless the Lord. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord ascends with the cry of command and with the shout of the trumpet of God. Să vă pomenească Domnul Dumnezeu într-un părăție ta, totdeauna acum și pururea vecii vecilor. May the Lord God remember us all in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. 
Η σειροσύνη σου μίστε κυρίως στην βάση του πάντου την ίμι και εις τους αιώνας του αιώνα μία βέβαια. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in his kingdom. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in his kingdom always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the Israel house of those who enter with faith, reverence in the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Amen. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and the ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Look upon us, O God, and accept our worship, accept it as you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the burnt offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. As you accepted this true worship from your holy apostles, accept also in your goodness, O Lord, these gifts from the hands of us sinners, that being deemed worthy to serve at your holy altar without blame, we may obtain the reward of the faithful stewards on the fearful day of your just judgment. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He was his and we shall be his and we shall be Τα στήρα, τα στήρα, εν σοφία πρόσχομεν. Πιστεύω ει ένα θεόν, πατέρα πάντο κράτορα, πίτι την ουρανού και ει ορατών τε πάντων και αωράτων. Και ει ένα κύριο ανίσουν Χριστών, τον ιό του Θεού, τον μόνο γενή, τον εκ του πατρό και η θέντα προπάντων των αιώνων. Πώ εκποτό θεών αληθινών. Εκ Θεού αληθινού γεννηθέντα, ου πιθέντα, ομοούσιον του Πατρίου, διούτα, πάντα εγγένετο. 
των διημάς τους ανθρώπους και δια την ημετέραν σωτηρίαν κατελθόντα εκ των ουρανών και σαρκοθέντα εκ πνεύματος Αγίου και Μαρίας της Παρθένου και ένα ανθρωπίσαντα σταυροθέντα τε περιμερημών επί ποντίου διλάτου και παθόντα και τα φέντα και ανασάντα την τρίτη ημέρα κατά τα σγραφάς και ανελθόντα εις τους ουρανούς και καθεζόμενων ενθεξιών του Πατρός και πάλι ενεργόμενων μεταδόξης κρίνε ζώντας και νεκρούς ου της βασιλείας ου χέστετε λέλος και εις το πνεύμα το Άγιον το Κύριον το Ζωδιόπιον το Εκπατρός εκπροεγόμενον το Συμπατρικιός συμπροσκυνούμενον και συντοξασμόμενον το λαλίσαν διά των προφητών εις μίαν Αγίαν Καθολικήν και Αποστολικήν Εκκλησίαν ομολογώ εν βάπτισμα εις άφεσιν αμαρτιών προς το κοανάσταση νεκρών και ζωή του μέλλοντος αιώνας. Αμήν. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Thanks to the Lord. It is proper and We are praised by the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many-eyed cherubim. Round you stand the seraphim, one with six wings, another with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying out to one another with ever unceasing voices and ever resounding praises. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying.
you gave us the law to help us. You appointed angels as guardians, and when the fullness of the time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, whom you, through whom you created the ages. He being the splendor of your glory and the image of your being, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal with you, God and Father, but being God before all ages, he appeared on earth and lived with humankind. Becoming incarnate from a holy virgin, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, conforming to the body of our lowliness, that he might change us in the likeness of the image of his glory. For since through man sin came into the world, and through sin death, it pleased your only begotten Son who is in your bosom, God and Father, born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, that those who died in Adam might be brought to life in him, your Christ. He lived in this world. He gave us the precepts of salvation. Releasing us from the delusions of idolatry, he guided us to the sure knowledge of you, to the true God and Father. He acquired us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Having cleansed us by water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death in which we were held captive, sold under sin. Descending into Hades through the cross, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the bonds of death. He rose on the third day, having opened a path for all flesh to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible that the author of life would be dominated by corruption. So he became the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might himself be the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat at your right hand of your majesty on high, and he will render to come to render to each according to his works. As memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these gifts which we have set forth before you according to your commands. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever-memorable and life-giving death, on the night he was delivered up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and pure hands and presenting it to you, God and Father, and offering thanks, blessing, sanctifying, and breaking it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it, offering thanks, blessing, and sanctifying it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and you confess my resurrection. Therefore, Master, we also, remembering his saving passion and his life-giving cross, his three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, enthronement at your right hand, God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das eikt und son si prospero men katapanda, panda. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. Therefore, most holy Master, we also, your sinful and unworthy servants, whom you have made worthy to serve at your holy altar, not because of our own righteousness, for we have not done anything good upon the earth, but because of your mercy and compassion, which you have so richly poured upon us, we dare to approach your holy altar and bring forth the symbols of the holy body and the blood of your Christ. And we pray to you and call upon you, O holy of holies, that by the favor of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us, and upon the gifts here presented, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Theos, me to Matalota, they saw my God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. To bless, sanctify, and make this bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life and salvation of the world. Amen. 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 Unite us all to one another who become partakers of the one bread and the cup and the communion of the one Holy Spirit. Grant uh, none of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ to judgment or condemnation, but that we may find mercy and grace with all the saints who throughout the ages have pleased you, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect.
hundred years of grandhood. Terrible young man is this finishing up. This is later. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Our God, the God who saves, you teach us to justly thank you for the good things which you have done and still do for us. You are our God who has accepted these gifts. Cleanse from every defilement of flesh and spirit and teach us to live, to, how to live according to your holiness that we may receive the portion of your holy gifts with a clear conscience and may we be united with the holy body and blood of your Christ. Having received them worthily, may we have Christ dwelling in our hearts and may we become the temple of your Holy Spirit. Yes, our God, let none of us be guilty before these, your awesome and heavenly mysteries, nor be infirm in body and soul by partaking of them unworthily. 
but enable us even to our last breath to receive a portion of your holy gifts, worthily as a provision for eternal life and an acceptable defense at the awesome drudge and seat of your Christ, so that we together with all the saints who throughout the ages have pleased you may become partakers of your eternal good things, which your Lord had prepared for those who love you. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Pate de mon, no en disuranis, ayes tito tonamasu, el tecto y vasiliasu, y en itito to terimasu, vos anulera no que epitis yis, tonarto de mon ton abusion, dos simin simeron, que asimint a oblivantaimon, vos que mis afimes y salvet simon, que mis enegis y mas ispiras mon, a la lice y mas a poto ponirum. Lord and Master, Father of mercies and God of every consolation, bless, sanctify, guard, fortify, and strengthen those who have bowed their heads to you. Distance them from every evil deed, lead them to every good work, and make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these your most pure and life-giving mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and the communion of your Holy Spirit. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, who God hears from your dwelling place and the of the kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God be merciful. Be merciful. Be merciful. Let us be attentive the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken, distributed, broken, but not the way he is raped. Somebody sanctifies those who partake of him. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment, and being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. 
loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me a sinner. Behold, I approach Christ from the King of God. To me, John, the unworthy priest, is given the most precious holy body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner.
go through the cross, joy has come to all the world, ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. We welcome you all here today, the members of our Holy Trinity family, as well as the many guests that we have visiting us. At this time, the holy gifts of the body and blood of Christ will be brought forward. We have three chalices today. As always, during the church school year, we ask that the church school staff and staff only please come to this one first, so that you may arrive at your classes before your children. All others, students, faithful, uh, and those who have prepared for Holy Communion who are Orthodox Christians, please remain where you are. You will be dismissed one row at a time by the parish council. All others who will not be receiving today, we invite you to remain till the end of the liturgy and join us for the communion of fellowship at our coffee hour afterwards. May God have mercy on us. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Wash away, O Lord, by your holy blood, the sins of those commemorated through the intercessions of the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. Amen. We have seen the true light. We have received the Holy Spirit. Exalt through God above the heavens and may your glory be above all the earth. Exalt through God above the heavens and may your glory be above all the earth. Exalt through God above the heavens. Glory be to the earth, blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. We thank you, Lord our God, for the communion of your holy, most pure, immortal, and heavenly mysteries, which you have granted us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of soul and body. Grand Master of all, that the communion of the holy body and blood of your Christ may become for us a faith unashamed, a love unfeigned, a fulfillment of wisdom, a healing of soul and body, the repelling of every hostile adversary, the observance of your commandments, and an acceptable defense at the dread judgment seat of your Christ. For you are our sanctification, and do we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Mr. of your disposition of Christ, God has been accomplished and perfect as far as was in our power, for we have had no more of Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This morning's message is really less of a sermon than it is an explanation and an invitation. And it's about something very, very important coming up in the life of the community, and it is the consecration of our beautiful St. George Chapel. So I would like to set the tone by having you repeat this simple phrase after me, because if I ask you, what's a consecration, what are you going to tell me? I'm going to give you the quick and easy answer that everybody can remember. Here it is. Repeat after me. As baptism is to a child, 
so is consecration to a church. All right, so what's a consecration? It's like, it's like a baptism. Here's what I'm going to quiz you with this morning. Tell me what happens in the baptism. First of all, in the narthex and in front of the font, what do we do? A lot of. A lot of prayers, a lot of blessings, and a lot of preparation, right? Then we put the child into the font and we baptize them three times, right? If it wasn't a baptismal font, what would you otherwise call putting a child into a body of water? Oh, come on, you've had children? A bath, right? You're washing, that's the purpose, right? You're going to wash the baby. And you take the baby out, then you do some, what else, what else happens next? They say, the chrism, right? Seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, anointing. So washing, prayers, washing, anointing. And then, usually as the priest stays over here and finishes, and the godparents wash their hands and so forth, the child goes over, and what do the other helpers help do with to the child? Dress the child, right? Guess what? All of those things are going to happen during the consecration to the church and the altar of the chapel. All right, so just a reminder that the consecration is a historic, once-in-a-lifetime, never-to-be-done-twice to a church. Again, in our case, we eventually will have the consecration of this church, God willing, in 2023. But this first consecration in... Hmm, 60 years almost will be happening at the chapel, which is on the other side over there on Ringeisen Road. The last time we had a consecration of a church in this community was the old Holy Trinity down on North Avenue. You never reconsecrate a church. We left that church, removed the consecrated elements, removed the altar, all of that. It's no longer an Orthodox church. So normally, and that's an unusual circumstance, Normally, the consecrated altar is there and the consecrated church until it either like, doesn't exist anymore or the entire world doesn't exist for the coming of the Lord. So it's intended to be a once an eternity thing. How many baptisms do we believe in for the remission of sins? One, out of the creed. How many times is a church consecrated? One. Why? Because as a baptism is to a child, so the consecration is to a church. I hope... You're starting to get a better idea here. All right, so just a little bit of a history. In, on April 23rd, 2005, we did great groundbreaking for the chapel. April 23rd, sounds familiar? It's the feast day of St. George. What a beautiful thing to do these things on significant dates in the life of the church, and that's named St. George, the celebration of St. George. A year later, thanks to our help from Bill and a, and a great crew here and Tom Atrakis who built it for us, uh, April 24th, 2006, on that same weekend, we were able to do the Tiranixia, the official opening of the doors, like we did here back in June of 2013. And on the weekend following the Feast of St. George, this year, on May, uh, Saturday, May 4th, we are going to do the consecration. So, what happens during the consecration? The night before, we're going to have a Vespers on Friday night. On the one hand, it's kind of like a regular Vespers. Don't be afraid to come, it's not that long. However, what's really cool about this Vespers, it's the only Vespers you're ever gonna celebrate in a church where there's nothing on the altar. Look at all the stuff we have. We have the altar cloths, we have the gospel, we have everything. The only thing that will be on the altar are the relics that are being granted to us from the archdiocese. There are relics of three different saints, and they will be on a paten, that liturgical plate, so to speak, on a, on a pedestal, covered up with a communion cloth, and they'll be brought into the church, and they'll be placed there for the Vespers service. That's the really cool thing that happens at the Vespers, in addition to some beautiful hymns. So listen, if you want to know, besides, okay, it's all about the church, no, it's not all about the church, it's all about us in the church. Listen to this beautiful hymn. There's this, there are hymns that are sung, in the Vespers consecration and Orthros, you will never hear anywhere else. You, in the life of this church, will only ever hear them again one more time 
when we consecrate this church. Here's one. It's our challenge. Be renewed, O brethren, and putting off the old man, live in newness of life, placing a bridle on all those things from which death comes. Let us discipline all our members, hating every evil eating from the tree, and only remembering the old that we may flee from it. Thus, here's the connection between us and the church, thus a person is renewed, thus is the day of consecration honored. So not only is the church being prepared, we're being prepared to worthily stand within the church to lift up the entire place to the Lord for special blessing. And there are special readings to remind us during that service of the history and the roots of a consecration. From the Book of Kingdoms, the it is read the dedication of the temple which was built by Solomon, and it's Solomon's prayer to the Lord. Then from the prophecy of Ezekiel about placing offerings on the altar, and we have placed the offerings of the church, and in fact the blood of the martyrs through these relics on the church, on the altar. And then we have readings from the saint, in particular it will be St. George, the naming of the chapel. All right, it's a, again, pretty simple. On Saturday evening, May 3rd, it takes place at 7 o'clock. I encourage you all to participate. Again, you'll never see this again until it happens here, and then you'll never see it again. So, um, on s Saturday morning, uh, you know how we priests get about arriving to church on time, so I'm just going to tell you this. Arrive late at your own peril, because you're going to miss most of the special and really, could I use the word cool stuff, that you're going to want to see that only happens at a consecration, and it happens before the liturgy starts. So, arrive at 8 o'clock. There will be seating in the chapel. We're going to give priority, and I believe everybody is going to agree with this. We're going to give priority to our senior members. So the chapel holds about 70 people or so, and we're going to allow our seniors to be inside the chapel. There will also be a tent that is outside the chapel to hold everybody else. Please get your name reservations in because that's how we're going to know who to bring inside to honor for their long life in the life of this church or for their age and wisdom and so forth. And, and we want to honor them as we're told to honor our elders. All right. Now, don't be afraid of being in the tent. There is going to be a really cool AV setup where inside the church, inside the chapel, there will be a screen and you'll be able to see everything happening inside the altar because a lot of it happens, and you can imagine, like, imagine the priest and, the, and the, the bishops are standing here, you can't see anything. There's going to be a camera planting, right, pointing right down towards the altar. You'll be able to see everything like from a helicopter above, even inside the chapel. Outside, Stephen and our committee have gotten two giant screens, and you'll be able to see the whole inside of the chapel. You'll also be able to see that bird's eye view of the altars. No matter where you are, you'll be able to see. Uh, so that's the morning. Get there, please, on time. So what happens then at the end of the Orthros, but before the liturgy, there's a whole intermediary service to the consecration. We'll have a tent out here where the clergy will vest, and they will, have, they will bring the relics out there. They'll process around, and they'll come right down the middle of the tent and right to the front of the chapel in that platea, that cement patio area, that plaza area in front, and that's where the whole consecration service begins. Um, and we will have there some special ways, I believe, for you to participate. All right, then, prior to going into the church, because the doors of the chapel are closed, a really neat way for you to participate. We will take, you know how we go around on Holy Friday? We go around, right, one time around here, right? The bishop will hold the relics on the paten, and then the priests, and the choir, and the chanters, and whatever, and we will go, and all of you, we will go entirely around the chapel three times. And there are special hymns that are sung three times around. So we're taking the saints, leading the procession with us to go into the chapel. They'll be brought back to the front. There's that special door opening service that we do at Anastasi here, and we did for the Theta Nexia with the bishop pounding on the doors. It's not too hard, I hope and uh, with his staff, and then we'll proceed in, and that's when you really want to keep an eye on those monitors, because all this amazing stuff happens. There's this, um, it's called mastic, it's a, it's a compound with a whole bunch of things in it uh, that is actually cooked for like three or four hours ahead of time, and the relics are placed 
in the altar because there's a specially prepared receptacle. This is actually it. I know you probably can't see it too well, but that's the altar there is a beautiful carved wooden altar, and that's the top. And you can see a person's hand, so you can see the perspective. That's, a, that's the piece that lifts out. The relics are placed in that receptacle, and then this liquid hot mastic is poured on top. But there's something other special way for you to participate. So one, the names of everybody we know buried at the cemetery will be printed on a list and placed in that receptacle. And your name will be in there, not on that list, but your name will be in there on another list, which is a list of all of the current stewards of Holy Trinity Church. That's why the big announcement is in the bulletin. Don't wait till May, June, July, August, September to put your names in for stewardship this year. Sign that card and get it in. It's the only fair way to do it. We don't know who's a member, who's not a member, whatever. It, get the signed card in, and you and your family's names will be listed. They will be sealed forever in the altar of Christ with the names and the relics of the saints. And what's in that mastic? This is pretty amazing stuff. We had to get it from Greece. It's a special compound made with uh, Smyrna, aloe, incense, Retsini, not Retsina, Retsini, it's apparently something else, uh, Lav, Lavdano, I don't know what that is, beeswax, and marble dust. It's all made together. There's specific historical and scriptural and spiritual reasons for all of these things. We just use the recipe that, that we're told to use, right? And uh, after that, then the, uh, the Metropolitan, when he places all these things in this receptacle, will take a spatula and seal that shut. And then we will take in four corners of the altar, one, two, three, four, and place icons of the four evangelists. Again, you'll see all this on the monitors when you're watching. A, 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 a cloth icon of each of the four evangelists go in each corner. Take a good look. You will never see it again. I will never see it again. In all the years I was at the old Holy Trinity Church, I never saw the top of the altar table. Why? Because on top of all that goes this thing called a katasarkion, which means on top of the body, and it's a special cloth with a band around it, and it gets put on the altar top, tightened up, and never taken off again. The vestments of the altar go on, on top of that. So, if you ever want to see the top of the altar, the ceiling of the icons, and all that, don't miss the consecration. You can tell your children, you can tell your grandchildren about this. After that, well, we will continue the liturgy, and uh, you'll hear a lot more about it. The Metropolitan really has, so I've been at a consecration with him. He really does some beautiful explanations of that. But I, I just, I really, really beg of you. It's not for the numbers, honestly. We'll be full no matter what. It's for your sake, for your own personal spiritual uplifting, for your contribution as members of this community to be part of that historic service. What a beautiful thing. Every time you will go to the cemetery, every time you walk in the chapel, you will say to yourself, I was there for the consecration. Yes, I know what's under those altar cloths because I saw, it by my, I saw it myself as it was being done. It's just an amazing, amazing experience. I remember this vividly from when my mother was the parish council president at Holy Trinity Church back in Camp Hill and I was in college. And uh, I wasn't a seminarian yet, but we did the consecration of the church and they asked me to come in and be the photographer. So I was right there on top of it. It was really cool. So I saw that one, and I saw the one in Cannonsburg. This will be my third consecration. I've been blessed to be able to witness. For many of you, it'll be your first one. For those of you, maybe, that you were around from the old Holy Trinity back in the 19, like, late 1950s, 1959, uh, you might have been there. But for most of us, honestly, it'll be the first time ever experienced. So please, one, put your reservations in for the service. It's free. The service is free. There's no charge. We don't normally take reservations for services, but we have to this time because of the space. Two, please purchase your banquet tickets. It's the next day, not the same day. It's on Sunday after liturgy. It's not a coffee hour. It's a real banquet. It's a beautiful meal. Evan's going to prepare for us and Kelly, and they're going to really do a nice job. It's a celebration of the consecration. The funds from that also help pay for some of the costs of the consecration. Third, get there on time, please. Remember, no parking at the chapel, it'll all be at the, at the uh, church with the shuttle over. And lastly, in the bulletin you'll see, there's still a few things to be donated, and we really appreciate it if some of you would like to yourself or honor family members or departed members. We have a couple of altar cloths that still be, needed to be done, vestment sets uh, for the altar, the uh, beautiful 
Annunciation icons for the door. The last icon left mounted at that church, that's it, no more. So if you want to grab that one in honor or memory of somebody, please do that. Uh, also, the entomans, the special cloths that we do the liturgy on, they were custom made in Greece and sent over here, and then they'll be shipped around not only to our church, but to other churches as they need them to do the liturgy. You can't do a liturgy without an antimens. That's a really special blessing as well for a family to participate in. So that is my substitute sermon today to help you all understand what's going on with the consecration. Uh, really all in the name of Christ to dedicate another church to him as we dedicate a child to him every time we come through uh, with a baptism. So I look forward to seeing you all there and celebrating that beautiful feast together. Please rise. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ our God, and I hope glory to you may Christ our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us. As a good, loving, and merciful God, through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious apostles, the holy, God-bearing fathers, the holy, victorious martyrs, of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Mary of Egypt, Aristarchus, Pudens, and Trophimus, the apostles of the Seventy, Thomas the martyr, Ar Ardalion the Mime, and Demetrius the new martyr of Arcadia, whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, Basil the great Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, and of all the saints, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect all of you. Good morning. Please be seated.